Greetings and salutations. This is Frederick John here with your weekly web developer video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the semantic framework. I'm going to be integrating some features into a Rails 5 project that I'm working on. I've recently discovered that there's some things about the semantic UI framework that I really like a lot. Uh, I've used it minimally in the past. I've been using it a lot recently and I've really come to like a lot of the different components and a lot of the different uh, theming aspects that they have. Uh, the cards in particular I think they have really awesome look and feel for the cards, uh, tables and segments. Um, they, they've really done a lot of things very well and we're going to take a look at how you can integrate some of these features into your website. Thank you for joining me and let's get started. So here's a sign up page for my Rails application and I have the semantic framework, uh, I have the CDN linked and I'm using device for my authentication. So what I've done is I've set it up so that you know when you land on the page you have the username as autofocused, it requires an username, email, and then a password there's a terms and conditions which right now is just a placeholder and then um, the sign up button and then of course if you already have an account you can log in which would take you to the login page which you can log in um, right now we're going to take a look at the sign up page which if you're familiar with rails and you're using a device for your project uh, this is under views device registrations new so what you can see here is all of the code for the sign up page. Now what we're going to be looking at today, you can ignore everything up here. The only thing that we're going to focus on is the sign up button. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to make sure that the user has viewed the terms and conditions and that they have agreed to them before they sign up. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to have it so where they check this box agreeing to the terms and conditions and then they can sign up. I don't want them to be able to sign up if they have not checked this box. Okay, so looking at the semantic framework, they have states available on their buttons. So you can see a standard button and they have a disabled state. The disabled state makes it unable to be interacted with. So that's a good way to ensure that a user has clicked on this checkbox. I'm going to make it disable the button until they've clicked on the checkbox and then I can um, enable it again. So the way that we're going to do that is instead of using class UI primary submit button, we're going to do uh, UI disabled primary submit button. By adding that class save and refresh you can see you can no longer click on this even if it even if the checkbox is marked you can't click on it so I need to figure out a way to make it so that when the checkbox is clicked this now allows us to sign up. Well you can do that very simply with some jQuery code I'm just going to add it right to the page. And what you have here is the jQuery. We're looking for the input, which is named terms, which as you can see here, that's our checkbox, named terms. And on change, which is when you're clicking the, the box, clicking on the, on the agree, I agree to the terms and condition box. Uh, when that changes, we're going to have this function invoked. Now, what is that function going to do? It's going to take uh, the ID of sign up, which I've given to the sign up button, and it's going to remove the class UI disabled primary submit button. And then after that, this is chaining jQuery. You can chain methods together. So after that, it's going to add a class UI primary submit button. What we're going to do is inspect element. 
which is going to allow us to view in our web page and see what's going on. Now if we refresh the page we can see that the button itself is not able to be selected and it is under class UI disabled primary submit button. If we agree to the terms and conditions the class has changed it is now the UI primary submit button and now because we've agreed we can sign up and that's just by adding the word disabled to the class and this short little jQuery script. Now the problem here is by unclicking it it still remains lit up so we need to have some type of conditional where if it is checked then you can click sign up and if it is not checked then you cannot click sign up which is what we're gonna add now I'm gonna go back into the code and underneath the script that we've put in here I'm gonna add another script very short I'm gonna separate it so you can see it better this is gonna add an if else statement it's very similar to what we've had before but it's going to allow us to maintain that state of checked or not checked this script works and there's multiple different ways to do this I'm just doing this now because it's um, the first thing that I thought of and it's very simple this essentially changes the class once you've agreed but it does not maintain any state it doesn't know if you've checked and unchecked it or if you've checked it and refreshed the page or whatever the case may be. So what, what this will do is it will check, it will maintain the state. Is If it is clicked, then we're going to remove that disabled attribute. Otherwise, the sign up is disabled. So this is how I know that a user is not going to sign up unless they've agreed to the terms and conditions. And the terms and conditions are highlighted right here for them to click on and view. So we can reload the page. I have to save it and okay, we can reload the page now. Now if it is clicked, they'll be able to sign up. If it's not clicked, then they cannot sign up. There's no way for them to do that. So now I know that if a user has signed up, then they have checked this box and agreed to the terms and conditions, which right now the only condition is to have fun.